and subtract fractions with common denominators. We're going to first start by using models in order to show what it looks like to add and subtract fractions that have the same denominator. So for example, let's pretend that for a project you needed 1 8 yard of ribbon and you also needed 3 8 yard of yarn. And if you wanted to know the length of all of that together, you could model it with fraction powers. So you could take the 1 8 yard of ribbon and then add, add that together to the 3 8 yard of yarn and then you all you'd have to do is count and see how many um, what part of a yard you have all together. So it would show four eighths. One, two, three, four eighths all together. So one eighth plus three eighths equals four eighths. And we know that when we simplify that, four eighths is a one half fraction. So in simplest form, that would be one half. Here's another example. Let's pretend that you had two sixths of a pizza that was pepperoni and you also had three-sixths of a pizza that was plain cheese. And if you wanted to know what part of a fr um, pizza you had all together, you could show it with a circle model. I here have two, I've divided my pizza into six pieces. I have two parts are pepperoni, three parts are cheese, and you can count the parts that are shaded or colored. One, two, three, four, five, six of the pizza is there. It's all together five-sixths of a pizza. We also can easily model this with pattern block pieces. You take your hex, your yellow hexagon is one. You can show two triangles to e to sh represent the two six that's pepperoni, and three tri triangles to represent the um, parts that are cheese. Together they make five six. So both of these models, the area models, show that two thirds plus three six is five six. The steps that you can follow based on those um, few examples that we just had, when you add fractions with common denominators, you want to do three things. First, you want to make sure that you keep the same denominator. Whatever your denominator already was, keep it the same. Then you're going to add the numerators. And finally, your last step is to simplify the fraction. Make sure that it's in simplest form. So let's do a couple examples. I have 5 tenths plus 2 tenths. I want to make sure that I keep the same denominator which will be 10, and then I will just add the numerators. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 tenths plus 2 tenths is 7 tenths. Here's another example, 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. I'm going to make sure I keep the same denominator, which is 4, and then I'm going to add the numerators. 3 plus 1 is 4. Whenever you see a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are the same, you should immediately think, oh, that's a one whole fraction. So 4 fourths in simplest form is one. Make sure you represent it that way. Here, seven twelfths plus one twelfths. I'm going to keep the same denominator, which is twelve, and then I'm going to add the numerators. Seven plus one is eight. Now immediately when you see in a fraction that both of your numbers are even, you should think, I need to do some simplifying here. So I'm going to save myself some steps and go ahead and find the greatest common factor by listing the factors of 8. Remember, if you want to find a factor, you got to break it down. Factors of 8, 1 times 8 makes 8. Also, 2 times 4 makes 8. So the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. Factors of 12, break it down. 1 and 12. 2 times 6 makes 12. And 3 times 4 makes 12. And I want to find the greatest one that they have in common. And I can see here that the greatest common factor of 8 and 12 are 4. So I'm going to divide my numerator and my denominator by 4. Remember, dividing by two fraction, a fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom is like a dividing by 1. So 4 divided, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the answer, the simplified answer to 7 twelfths plus 1 twelfth in simplest form is two-thirds. Now, I want to warn you about a mistake that I see lots of fourth, actually, no, just kidding, lots of third graders make and sometimes some fourth graders make it. So I want to show you so that you can help your friends watch out to make sure that they don't make the same mistake. So here's the right way to do it, first of all. One-fourth plus two-fourths equals three-fourths. And I'm going to show with fraction towers here, 1 fourth put together with 2 fourths, 
The length of this piece is 3 fourths. Well, here's what some third graders do the wrong way. They do 1 fourth plus 2 fourths. They add the numerators and they add the denominators. But let's prove why this isn't a good answer. If you think that the answer to this is 3 eighths, here's the size of 3 eighths. I can show that here with my fraction tower pieces. Here's the size of a block that's 3 eighths. But if you put together a 1 fourth piece with a 2 fourths piece, you get something this size. And when you compare those, you can see that 1 3 eighths is way smaller than 3 fourths. See the difference here? So 3 eighths is less than 3 fourths. If you see somebody do this, I want, we have a code word. I want you to yell, Dad! Because that's going to stand for don't add denominators. So if you see somebody do that, or you accidentally do it yourself, or if I do it, I want you to yell, Dad! To remind us, don't add denominators. So let's talk about subtracting fractions that have the same denominators. Let's use models first, just like we did for addition. You can think about it like taking away pieces. Subtraction is taking away something. So if you start with 11 twelfths of a pizza and you eat 7 twelfths of the pizza, first of all, you're going to be sick, but then you might want to think about how much is left. So I've drawn my pizza here and colored in the amount that I'm starting with, which is 11 out of the 12 pieces. And then I'm going to, whoops, I found a mistake. My problem down here is four. Just kidding, you didn't eat that much. You only ate four twelfths, okay? So if you are going to eat four out of 12 of those pizzas, you're going to subtract, or we can just erase one piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces. I've taken them away, and now I'm going to see how many I'm left with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I am left with 7 twelfths. 11 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is 7 twelfths. Let's do another example. But in this way, you can think about subtraction like finding the difference. So let's pretend that we were outside playing during extra recess playing basketball, and I scored 4 out of 5 of all the three th free throws that I shot. Well, Mr. E only scored 1 out of 5 of each of his free throws. So I want to figure out how much more did I score than Mr. E. So here's the size of one hole. I've shown four fifths here in green. That's my score. How many I scored. And Mr. E only did one fifth. All right, one out of five. So you can also think about subtraction as the difference, the part that's not shaded in on the bottom. So here on the difference, you can see that difference is equal to one, two, three fifths. So four fifths minus three fifths, the difference of those is four fifths minus one fifth. The difference is three-fifths. So if we're not going to use models and we're just going to talk about, just going to show the steps, you can um, follow these steps. When you subtract fractions with common denominators, just like adding, you want to keep the same denominator. Then you want to subtract the numerators and finally simplify your fraction. So let's do a couple examples. 9 tenths minus 4 tenths. I'm going to keep the same denominator, which is 10. 9 minus 4 is 5. And immediately you should think, oh, 5 is half of 10. I can simplify that without even having to do any steps. 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So 9 tenths minus 4 tenths is 1 half. If you see a fraction like this where you have to subtract from one whole, it would help you to rename what one whole is, uh, an another name for one whole. And since I'm going to subtract something that's in thirds, I should go ahead and think about my whole as broken up into thirds. So I'm going to rewrite this fraction to be 3 thirds, these are equal, minus 2 thirds, can, you can easily see is 1 third. And finally, I don't think you need the reminder, but just in case, think about dad except for you want to make it don't subtract denominators. Let's look at why that doesn't make any sense if I subtracted denominators. Four fifths minus one fifth, if I subtracted the numerators, but then also subtracted the denominators, I'd get three over zero, which isn't even a number. So don't add denominators, don't subtract denominators either.